Well, hello there, everybody. This is Max with a Website Pro. No intros on my videos, but uh, this particular lesson has to deal with searching a PHP encrypted database. So, if I can direct your attention here, you'll notice here there I have a, a database called Users, and in it I have People, and in there we see that we have this encrypted information: the name. All the names are encrypted. The emails are encrypted. So what people were telling me was, well, there's no way to search your database. You know, Max, a lot of good that does. Because this is a follow-up to the other PHP encryption decryption tutorial. And there will be links in the description of this video if you want to learn how to encrypt and decrypt PHP. But uh, what the issue was is they were saying that, you know, they couldn't search database and I told them that I would indeed create a tutorial that will show them how to search the database so if we go here let's search for my name Maximus we can see there it is pulled in from the database I also put someone in here called Bert so we'll go ahead and look for Bert you know, let's see there's Bert down there okay we see his name and email and let's say that we just wanted to search everybody that had a Gmail Okay, so there's somebody, uh, the Gmail addresses. Okay, so that's taken the information, the encrypted information from this database, and I'm going to show you how it's done. So the other thing I want to show you is, for example, if we search for not my name, Maximus, and we hit submit, we could get a printout. Now notice this is the encrypted name from the database. Right here, this long line here is the encrypted line. And here's the decrypted name, Maximus. Here's the encrypted email from the database. Here's the decrypted email. And also I'm bringing in the ID number. Okay, and uh, you'll notice that I added this search page to the, uh, to the files. And I have them on a website pro. And the link in this description, you'll be able to just go and download all the files. And if you're happy with that, you can stop the video now, go to the website, download those files, and, and if you want to hang around a little bit, I'll show you how I did this. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to direct your attention to the search page in my Notepad++. Let me bring it over here so I can explain. You'll notice, <clears throat> first of all, I brought in the header, kind of like last time. And so there's a couple changes that I made to the header. I've also, we set the date and time to be Eastern Standard Time Zone. That's America, New York, in PHP. I included the functions.php file. And now down here, these style sheets, I kind of changed them around. I, I'm using a CDN, so I didn't have to download all the files and then give them to you. But if you're on a machine that's not connected, to the internet that you're working on you might want to download the files because the CDN won't work for you then. I'm also including this in the header the menu.php like I did last time but I did add one more thing to the menu.php I added the search page a link to the search page and you can see that oh, let's see you can see that right here when you click on search it'll take you to the search page okay so going back over the changes, go back to the search page is where, where we were at. You'll notice that uh, I'm, I'm utilizing the bootstrap, uh, a div class of well, like, I, like I've done before. But here I put search by name or email in the h2 tag. Now I'm using a form method of post, and the action is going to take you to the results.php page. Okay, and that page is located right here. Okay, you can see here that I'm getting the, the post variables and I'm echoing them out. I'll, I'll discuss with that in detail in a minute after I'm done with the search page. So I, I start off with this div class of form group. And this is where a lot of the magic happens. In Bootstrap, we can actually set classes with this select picker. And what that'll do is that'll go get the, all the information from this function that we have in our function file called names. And as we type in there, it's going to do a data live search. Okay. And so let me show you what that does. 
while I'm typing in here, if I'm typing uh, KI, there's no results. But if I start typing Max, you can see Max misses there. If I start typing Bert, you can see uh, Bert, is, Bert is there. Okay. Let me go ahead and go on. That's what the data live search does. It'll br bring it up. It, it does the search for you. Now this data size is one. I, I have it set to one. Let me set it to five. So I'm going to set. So if you have people in the database that have more than, uh, you know, like if you have more than one person named Maximus in your database, uh, let me show you what that does. Let me refresh this page. And I'll go ahead and start typing Maximus. Now, notice we have two entries with the name Maximus in it. Okay? And that'll show up to five people. You know, uh, and that's what that does. That little check mark thing, you'll notice I'll, I'll check mark Shirley. But if I open it back up, she's the one that's checked. That it happens to be this particular thing right at the end here. Or right in the in the class at the end of the class called show tick okay so the data header is called search and the data width is auto that just adjusts as it adjust it to the width of the page so and then we start our options this is option I just labeled it as search so that whenever the page loads uh, in the in the search you can see it just says search here Okay, so that's what I did there. Now, the next thing that you see on the search page is this little function called names. And that's coming from the functions file. And I wrote this little function. So what it does is uh, uh, the function of names, I basically I have to set a couple global variables, the connection to the, my database, and the global key, which the key is up here in the functions file, if you remember it from the last lesson. Now you notice I'm going into my database. I select all from people, okay, and then I go into my while loop, and then I get the ID, the name, and the email right there, okay, and then I echo them out into this option uh, tag, and right here I'm getting the, the ID of the person in the database. And then the data tokens, I'm putting the name. The data subtext, I'm putting the email. And so let me show you what that is. So as we type uh, Maximus here, you'll notice that beside each name, I there's the email address. That's called the subtext. And that's how that works. Okay. And, and what that also does is you could search by the email. So if you don't remember the name, you remember the email, or vice versa, you could do it that. And you can in include a lot more. And then finally, I just echo the name out as the, the, the main thing uh, that's in the uh, options. But you could actually grab anything. You could just grab emails. You could just grab names. You could grab comments, birthday, whatever you have in your database, you can do it this way. And you can use... Uh, bootstrap to do the searching for you okay so that's how you can search and then once you search for a name like for example if you're searching for Maximus and you hit submit I have this results page where you can print out all kind of details on that particular person okay there's a couple more things that I want to go over with you if you're into the techie stuff and I know that a lot of you are so I just want to make sure that I cover everything. Now in the header, what I did was is I changed the, uh, like I said, the, the, I put the, the new style sheet uh, from the CDNs. But in the footer, you got to make sure that you include these scripts. If you don't include these scripts, you got to have your jQuery, you have to have your bootstrap, and you have to have your bootstrap select. Okay, it's kind of hard to read when I click on it. But that bootstrap select is what's going to help you with searching the database okay and uh, the results page uh, we're just grabbing uh, the uh, we're going to select all from people where the ID so we're bringing over the ID on the search page you'll notice in the search page here this this button or in the uh, in the names in the functions we're grabbing the ID and the ID is the value that we're grabbing so that whenever it comes over to the results page, we're going to grab that, 
the ID in the results page and that's how we query the database and we could get everything all the details about that particular query and echo them out on the page so it's pretty simple it's pretty simple how to do this you could you could do it uh, another way you could uh, grab your uh, database your MySQL database and uh, create a, uh, a JSON or an XML and then bring it in that way but why whenever you can do this so and then there's there's all different types of ways to query the an encrypted database you know using this method and I just wanted to show you guys that yes it is indeed possible I know a lot of people were uh, um, you know concerned that once they have all this information encrypted into the database well how are they going to query it well that's how you query it because as you could see the information in this database is all encrypted all right uh, please if you like this video uh, give it a, a like subscribe to my channel and get notified and uh, make sure that uh, you visit the website for all the files I provide all the files for free for you guys so you could download it and experiment uh, the next time that I come back for this encryption tutorial so I'm going to show you how to use sessions whenever a person log in logs in you could grab their session ID and then echo out the encrypted data just for them and then they could change it whenever they change their information it will be encrypted in the database so so that it could be retrieved later all right this is max with a1 website pro i hope you li like this video and i'll see you in the next tutorial